Hello guys! Roughly a month ago, in the middle of July, a guy named Tobias Petri shared a survey, the state of Laravel survey, with quite a lot of questions around Laravel. How you use it, what are the tools, what are your preferences, and stuff like that. And he asked to share it, which I did, on my Twitter and also on this YouTube channel in the community section. I shared this one, and then Tobias told me on Twitter that it brought around a thousand new answers from you guys, so thank you for that. And this week, he released the results. So there are totally of 4,500 answers around Laravel. And let's see what people said about how they use Laravel. So I will zoom it in a bit and let's go one by one. The URL is stateoflaravel.com. It's public so you can take a look yourself. So male and female kind of predictable. I wouldn't really comment on that one. Let's stick on the technical topics. Location is also depending on what audience did he reach. So probably a lot of them were from Europe. And this is interesting thing, years of programming experience. So this survey is mostly based on more experienced developers, five years or more. So there were almost no juniors or very beginners in the survey. Years of Laravel experience, of course, correlated with the developer experience in general. Next, open source contributions. Now, this is interesting. One third of the developers contribute or have their own open source project, which is really cool. I think it is a great number. Of course, it could be bigger, but generally I was expecting that to be much lower. So thank you for everyone who contributes to open source in any way. Next, primary operating system, Mac or Windows or Linux, it's pretty close. So it's really interesting to see variety of operating systems. So I see a lot of tutorials online are on Mac OS, for example, my courses and I'm on Mac, but there are a lot of Windows users with local web servers like Laragon or XAMPP or something like that. And they are 36% of that audience. Primary code editor. And this was confirmed by my previous survey on this YouTube channel that PHP Storm and VS Code have roughly the same amount of audience, partly because VS Code is free and PHP Storm isn't, but I personally use PHP Storm and I really enjoy it. So if you can afford a better editor, it's a really good investment. Sublime is pretty weak with 5%, but some people still use it. Next, other programming languages that you code with, of course, it's JavaScript because we have to on the web with Laravel. TypeScript is part of, part of that. Now, Python, this is more interesting, 25%. Python is another backend language, but people use it with Laravel to perform some tasks, for example, for big data. And we have part of our quick admin panel actually written on Python to be able to process data and generate files faster. So we do have an example on our team colleague, David, who works with Laravel and Python. And then all the other languages have less percentage points, but it's a pretty big list. Application context, how do you use Laravel business or hobby? This is pretty silly questions. By the way, even at the end of this survey, Tobias is telling that these numbers are kind of, should be taken with a grain of salt because some questions could be misunderstood by people reading them. Team size is roughly one and five. Tech stack. Now this is interesting. PHP version. Majority of people, thank God, work with at least PHP 7.4 or PHP 8. So if you are on older versions, I advise you to upgrade. Laravel 8. This is a pretty sad statistics because a lot of people still use older Laravel versions, 5 or 6. I was expecting that number to be much lower, to be honest, because newest framework version has more features. But I get the idea. The project, for example, started in like 2016 or 2017, and there was no budget to upgrade, and it stayed at Laravel 5 or 6, and then those people are in these percentage points. But I would like to see the future where everyone is working on the latest Laravel version. And by the way, for that, you can use laravelshift.com. I'm not affiliated in any way, but to upgrade the older versions, use Laravel Shift is probably the best way. Database. It's not that interesting. I was expecting MySQL to be on top. So nothing really interesting here. Front-end framework. This is kind of a bad question, I think. Of course, everyone is using some kind of framework. I didn't expect 8%. It should be down to zero almost. Front-end reactivity. This is probably the most interesting question to me or the one that shows the most variety of tools. 
it was a multiple choice question so people could tick a few boxes and see what is the variety of tools used for the front end. Vue.js is the most popular with Laravel, of course, but see how many people still use jQuery, and that's okay. Recently on my channel, I launched one video about jQuery, about some tool about validation in jQuery, and the tool wasn't that popular, and the video wasn't that popular, but still, it benefited quite a few people. And there were people commenting like, who uses jQuery these days? You shouldn't use jQuery, but why? If it works for you, older tools are good tools, still good tools, and if you do use jQuery, that's fine. Also with newer technologies, Livewire and Alpine. So they were added to the stack pretty recently, but already have big audience. React is not that popular with Laravel. Maybe that surprised me a bit, but that kind of corresponds to the amount of content I see online on Twitter and elsewhere. I don't see a lot of articles or blogs or videos about React and Laravel. Let's go down. CSS styling. Where is Bootstrap here? So it's possible to make your application look awesome with Tailwind or with vanilla CSS, but not Bootstrap. <laughs> but uh, probably people who work with Bootstrap chose other, and probably that Bootstrap wouldn't really be high with percentage points, but still, I was missing that option to answer. But Tailwind CSS is really impressive, taking over 55% of the market. Next, another thing, and with this survey, what I want to emphasize is the variety of choice of what to use, what tools, what languages, what frameworks, and stuff like that. So for local development, what do you use? A web server, artisan serve, Docker. So all of those possibilities are okay. So it's a personal choice. It's a matter of education and understanding the differences between those three and whatever you use, it's okay. That's the main message of this survey in general. Debugging approach is a pretty silly question. So of course, everyone is using DD and stuff like that, but some of us use as toolbars and that's great to see 61% this number and debuggers, I don't see that much of Xdebug on my radar in my audience. Quality assurance. I liked how 59% of people use unit tests. And actually with this survey, it's an interesting thing. You can filter down to some question, so everything is clickable. So let's click senior developer. I've scrolled up or years of experience. For example, 10 to 20 years. Okay, and let's see other questions. What were the answers of that 10, 20 years group? Of course, open source is bigger, 46%. That is expected. Mac OS is 50%. PHP Storm is much bigger percent. And then let's go back to quality assurance. So 70% of senior developers write unit tests. For all the audience, it was 59% from what I remember, now it's 70. Next, we're almost at the end. So where do you host your source code? GitHub is an obvious leader, of course, but what surprised me a bit is that GitLab overtook Bitbucket. Bitbucket was really popular back in the day. It's not a convenient tool to use. We did use it within our team and we were pretty angry about the bugs and about the slowness and about stuff like that. But it allowed free private repositories. That was the selling point. And as soon as GitHub started allowing the same thing, then many people just jumped from Bitbucket to GitHub. And GitLab was slowly growing silently without really doing much damage to each of them, but it grew to 32% of the market. See, it's cool. Now, production deployments. When do you deploy? It's very different, so it's really individual, and I don't think it's even a valuable question, to be honest. PHP runtime, what servers do you use? Again, a big variety, but of course, virtual machine or virtual servers is the top option. Shared hosting is, I kind of dislike shared hosting, but some shared hostings have a lot of features, so they are okay. I personally prefer DigitalOcean for a majority of my stuff. Next, monitor your application. I personally use Bugsnack with my team and I enjoy it. And also there are a lot of tools mentioned here. So the value of this question is mostly to find out new tools which were unknown to you recently. And then opinion. Laravel is moving in the right direction. Everyone agrees. Laravel simplifies development. Of course, everyone agrees. Do you enjoy working with Laravel? Of course, the survey was for Laravel developers. So innovation speed. 
Now this is important and this is interesting. Laravel ecosystem is changing too fast. 64% of people think that Laravel is changing or innovating too fast. And I've seen discussions around that on Twitter recently. And in this year, Taylor and the team made the decision to switch to yearly releases of major versions. And I agree with that. So it kind of slowed down the surprises, the amount of surprises. But I actually disagree with that because latest Laravel versions since like 5.5 they didn't introduce almost any breaking changes that much. Well, routing was changed from Laravel 7 to 8, so it doesn't allow inline controllers anymore, but it was a small thing to change if you know what line of the code to change in the settings in the provider. And yes, Laravel 8 changed the auth to Jetstream and Breeze, but the old tools still work. So Laravel UI still works and alt auth still works. So I wouldn't qualify Laravel as changing too fast. Maybe it introduces too many new things, adding too many ways to do the same thing, but that's the beauty. It depends on how you think about that. Is it good or bad? Share in the comments below. Let's continue the survey in our comments and share your opinions on any question that I've just showed you. And again, disclaimer, the thing that I've told you before, these comments indicate that the question may be misunderstood by participants. But I think it represents the Laravel community pretty well. What do you think? Share in the comments. And thank you again to the author. Let's open his Twitter again. So follow him on Twitter for any comments, what he thinks about State of Laravel and check out the answers at stateoflaravel.com. That's it for this video. Subscribe to the channel for more news like this one and opinion sharing and see you guys in other videos.